Hello viewers, you're welcome to my channel. My name is Bobby and I'm a Biafra. Today I have something for you here and I want you to check it out. And also listen to the interview very well. Why Mobe from Channel TV was interviewing a professor. You will realize that Mazen and the Kalo, in fact, is the best. Everything he has been saying about Nigeria and about what is going on in Nigeria is the fact. If you don't, some people somewhere and some Igbos are busy criticizing him, but whatever it is he was saying and he's still saying is the fact. I want you to go through this interview, listen to it, and you understand why Asemat Nadikalo is the best of them all. Stay tuned and watch the video. Thank you. And I'll be coming back to analyze everything after you might listen to the interview. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Archaeology at the Amadou Bello University. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. If there's anything we can all agree on, I mean, there's a common thread running through all of the discourse that we have heard so far. It is that these killings are senseless and that government has done very little or nothing uh, to stop them. Or maybe what it is doing, we're yet to see because uh, the killings and the divisions are still running ri riot and um, it doesn't seem like it's going to come to an end. Try to help us make sense of what your reading of all that has been happening is. Well, in a way, if you are the victim, the killings are senseless. But if you are the one doing the killing, it makes sense. Um, a lot of Nigerians don't appreciate our history. They don't also appreciate what has been happening in this country, especially in the past few years. I believe that if people know history, they will know why the Fulanese are doing this. If people know our recent history, they will know that there is an attempt to grab a lot of land from the people of this country for the full and of the whole world. Uh, <clears throat> for people who don't know, the full and have their original homeland in Guinea, that is uh, in Futajalon. And um, they had an outing from Guinea from 1804, the outing in Nigeria was represented by the Usman and Fodio Jihad. It succeeded. There was a caliphate which they established outside even the boundaries of this country because the caliphate from Sokoto, if you go up country, it went into Chad, it went into Niger. And then from independence, we have heard about three Fulani leaders who have led this country. But in the original homeland, which is Guinea, the Fulanese have not been allowed to lead Guinea. So Nigeria has become their second preferred homeland, where they are inviting the Fulanese of the whole world to come and claim as their own country. And people should realize this. And if we sit down here on our ancestral lands in this country, and somebody comes in to kill us. It becomes a problem. Let Pro me just say Pro this. Professor, let I have just, to, I'm, I'm afraid I have let, to interrupt you. No, no, let me just say just, this. Just before you say what you say or what you want to say, I want to ask, how do you have, I mean, how are you able to draw this thread? You have talked about history. We yes. all know that before now, yes, yes we fought into tribal wars. Yes. I mean, there were conquests every yes. now and then. The Benin Empire, for instance, yes. uh, was quite expansive. Yes. Um, and it also, you know, made its own conquest. Yet nobody has been able, whenever if a mother gets fighting, nobody is talking about prehistorical or, you know, pre-colonial no, wars the, to justify what is happening now. The, the Ife Modakakwe War is a local phenomenon. In Nigeria, what happened when the British people came in? Remember, the caliphate was a pre-colonial phenomenon. And it gave the Fulanese some privileges even over the Hausa states because they manipulated Islam to take over the Hausa states. And it gave them 
some privileges over the Hausa state and other Nigerian groups which they used to raid as slaves. When the British people came in, people who know colonial history would know that they privileged them. They decided to divide and rule this country by privileging the Fulanese over other groups. So what happened is that the Fulanese moved with their privileges from the pre-colonial period into the colonial period. And now that we have independence, they are also moving with the privileges they had under the colonial uh, government into independent Nigeria. And independent Nigeria is not a feudal system. Independent Nigeria cannot allow a group of people to come into this country from all over West Africa and claim this as their own country. What happened during colonialism was that the states we have presently became fixated in terms of their boundaries. Well, my question is, how do you know that there is an invitation, as you put it, uh, from local Fulanese or Nigerian Fulanese, as it were, uh, to their counterparts and say Guinea? They, ha they have not hidden that. They have not hidden that. Remember, the governor of Kaduna State has agreed, has admitted that he used state funds in Kaduna to pay Fulani people from outside the country from coming to attack us. Remember that the government is now belatedly saying that the people who are responsible for this are foreign mis uh, mercenaries. Remember that the Inspector General of Police before this one and the Minister of Agriculture has argued consistently that the people attacking this country are not Nigerians. They are from outside. What this means is that if somebody comes from outside, he's coming at whose instance? Remember where Benue is. Professor, if you come from outside, if you come from outside, are you go uh, no, right into Banwood to attack it? Where just, are you coming from? Just before you go, and I mean, there have been other, uh, you know, there have been other plausible um, theories around this. They have talked about how there is an environmental crisis. The fact that even the Lake Chad is drying up, and you know, right now there is a need. I mean, even the desert is encroaching. We, we're all aware of that. And that, you know, pasture that used to be available for cattle is no longer available. Population is exploding. The usual cattle routes are no longer available uh, for cattle to, to go around as they used to, owing to this population explosion and development and civilization. All of this do not matter in the, in the uh, contest of the crisis that we're currently seeing? No, all, all of them matter, but they are not as important as the point I'm making. Remember the so-called cattle routes. They are not today's invention. These are cattle routes which were established when the jihad succeeded and there was a, a full uh, there, there was a Sokoto caliphate. So the cattle routes there were established for the full of the whole West African sub-region to come in and out of the country. Is it just uh, Nigeria that these routes were established? In? No, 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 no. It's not just Nigeria, but but try to remember what I'm trying to say. In Nigeria, which has become the second preferred homeland of the Fulani, we have more space. Certainly we have more space. But that doesn't mean that people can come from anywhere in the world, particularly with this type of criminal intentions and activities, to come and attack this Professor, country. Professor, you know, this... Now you have finished watching the Dashan an interview. You can see now that whatever it is that Mazid the Kalu is saying is the fact. People are beginning to wake up from sleep little by little. Even though Mopwe, Mopwe was trying to put the man in that corner, but as a professor he is, he stood his ground. Everybody knew that Nigeria could no longer walk. How can somebody 
from outside the country, bringing Fulanese from all the places to come and occupy our own land, our ancestral land. And our so-called governors are busy looking for position, looking for presidency, while our land has been occupied by some gender who is coming from outside the country, according to them. Shooting unnecessarily killing innocent people, and they won't help up to keep quiet. These things happening now is what Nanda Kalu told us several years ago, and it's, all of them have come to pass. They are happening. But we will never allow them to take over our land. It doesn't matter how they try. What the professor is saying is exactly what Mazin and the Carol told us several years ago, not today. But now professors are beginning to say it. Most of the land in the northern area have been occupied. They are looking for a way to occupy our forest. They're telling us that our forest does not belong to us. One stupid behavior will come out from nowhere. Try to force their people on us. We, the indigenous, go to people's places, who buy land with our money, we build houses. Why should somebody occupy our forests? Why should somebody occupy our forests? Why should somebody destroy our farms? Who are these people? They said they are coming from our side. Who is bringing them from our side? If they are coming from our side, who invited them? Look at the way you boys are suffering in Ghana. The way Ghanaians are. Government are treating them. Because they want them to pay million dollars in the business they are doing. Or somebody will come out of our country free of charge in the name of Fulani. Occupy our own ancestral land. And they want us to shut up. That will never happen. We will continue until their price is stopped. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much. And may God bless you. Please put your comment in the comment section and share this very important and stable as you do. Cheers.